Well, hey guys, thank you so much for the love on my last video sharing with you that we are going to have baby number three. This looks like six, but it's meant to be three. Um, so I thought in this video I would just sort of, sort of share with you kind of how far along I am and all the things that I know and all the things that have been kind of going on. Um, we are really excited. This baby was a complete, complete surprise. Um, as most of you know, my husband has been away working all year long. <laughs> um, and he's only come home like once or twice. Uh, so it was just, it was such a surprise. Um, we both, like, I've always wanted a larger family, like several kids, maybe five, six, seven, eight. I mean, like, I would love a large family. He was really happy with two um, and kind of didn't want any more kids. And so it just, we just never happened. Um, and I really always felt like there was somebody else. And earlier this year, he said the same thing to me too. And I was like, really? Um, and so I knew that we were both on the same page, but we had no plans of trying for another baby. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I was starting like a new eating plan. Um, I was like gearing up to like lose some weight and like do some like major physical fitness stuff. And as I started, I was like, why am I so hungry? Like ravenous hungry. And about a week later, I, I found out that I was pregnant. Um, so it came really as quite a surprise. Um, but this baby is so very wanted and we are just kind of flipping excited. So as of today, I am 12 weeks, um, four days. Every Sunday I flip over into a new week. Um, and yeah, so, um, what else should I tell you? Um, the pregnancy so far has been fairly good. Um, I'm in the care of a midwife, um, and it's a mi midwife team, um, and they are the same ones who I had with Aubrey, and then with Colt, and now with this little baby. Um, I am so excited to be with them again. Um, I absolutely love being in the care of midwives. They are just so amazing. Um, and if you are pregnant or plan on starting a family or having another baby and you've never gone through the care of a midwife, I cannot recommend them enough. They are just so amazing and I have felt so empowered in my pregnancies. Um, I don't know. They're just amazing. So what else can I tell you? <laughs> um, I felt really good this whole pregnancy. Um, really, really good. I, with all of my babies, I've never had morning sickness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Like, I've never once thrown up. Uh, yeah, like, I've not been nauseous, none of it. Um, and that's been the case with Aubrey and with Colt and now with this baby too. And since I've now hit the 12-week mark, they sort of say it kind of, like, if you were having morning sickness, it would sort of start tapering off at this point because your hormones are starting to balance out. So hopefully I won't have that problem at all. <laughs> um... But uh, the largest thing is that I've just been tired, like very tired. Um, there was a point where I was definitely taking naps every day. Um, and I'm not so much taking naps every day, maybe kind of every other day, like I'll rest and close my eyes and fall asleep for 20 minutes, half an hour, and I'm, you know, have enough stamina to keep going. But I do, I don't have a lot of energy, I could put it that way. Um, I have largely like, stop doing a lot of things like housework <laughs> um, and like a lot of my food prep and stuff like that. I've got, that's one thing I'm doing this evening, like I've got a ton of food that needs to be prepped, um, but it's, I'm just, I'm taking it easy. I have had some issue um, with spotting um, and there was one moment where we actually thought we lost the baby. Um, I'm not going to go into detail too much with that because I know that there are women who have lost babies and um, I just, I don't, it's a really sensitive topic. However, I will say I had some really serious symptoms. Um, my midwife had, didn't quite put me on bed rest, but it was like very modified, like lay low, don't do anything, 
basically sit on the couch, lay down all day kind of thing. Um, and it was that night that I ended up going to the emergency room. I was terrified that I'd lost the baby and um, it was when I went for the ultrasound, like they took my blood work and they gave me an ultrasound and the doctor was so quiet and not saying anything and the little wand wasn't moving. Like it was just on like one spot and it wasn't really moving. You know how like a lot of times they'll like wiggle it around and like follow the baby or something. I don't know. It was just in this one spot and I was laying there thinking, oh my gosh, this is it. Like, but he said, then he said, I'm just going to measure the heartbeat. And I thought to myself, I'm not getting my hopes up about this because it could just be, it's not a good heartbeat. Um, but then he said, can you see the screen? And so I lifted my head up and I could see the screen. He said, your baby is literally doing backflips. And he was laughing about it. And he said, can you see that? Like it's doing backflips. And then he said, your baby's using you as a trampoline. And I it was just like the coolest thing. And it was like the biggest moment from the Lord. I feel like, cause so many people were praying. Um, just saying, hey, I'm here, I'm okay, like, for now things are good. Um, so it was determined that I probably had um, a sub or cur something, hemorrhage. Um, and uh, since going to Emerge, I haven't really had any bleeding since then. So Praise the Lord. Um, they did say that if I continue to bleed into my second trimester, that they'll probably refer me to an OBGYN just to make sure that everything is okay and normal. But praise the Lord, I haven't really had any issue with that. Um, so things are feeling and, and looking good. I go tomorrow for an ultrasound um, just to check everything out and make sure everything is okay. But I'm uh, feeling so good. And it's so weird because I know like if you look this information up, you shouldn't be able to at this point, but I can actually feel the baby moving already. Um, and I felt it for a little while and I think probably because I'm a third time mom, probably because I know what I'm like looking for and I, my muscles are like crap, um, that I can feel the baby moving and um, that's kind of really exciting and fun. <laughs> um, we will definitely find out what we're having. Uh, we're really excited to find out. So if you're new to my channel, I have a boy and I have a girl. Aubrey is seven and Colt is eight. No, he's not eight. <laughs> oh my God. Mom brain, he is four. How could I say that? Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, um, I will have a schedule, scheduled C-section for this baby. Um, I When I had Aubrey, I went completely natural um, because I wasn't yet on the Canadian healthcare system. I'm an American living in Canada and I was still going through what's called permanent residency, which is I think kind of equivalent to a green card in the US, but it meant I couldn't be on the healthcare system at that point. Um, and so everything that was happening had to be out of pocket. Um, and because I went, I was overdue with her, they ended up inducing me. So immediately we were put into the care of a doctor um, and my midwife stayed with me the whole time, but I was already, like the bill was already piling up. Like we're in the care of a doctor, I had to be induced, like all the things. Um, and then once it came time to pushing, like I went as natural as possible because I didn't want to pay anything out of pocket. Like I didn't even want a Tylenol or like whatever, like nothing. Um, I basically failed to progress um, and I could not push her out. Um, turns out she was actually a sunny side up baby, but even that I would not have been able to push her out the way my pelvis, I guess, is shaped. It's just too small to push a baby out, which is so bizarre. Um, but I found out there are other women that are like this um, too. So. Anyways, I didn't know that at the time, obviously, um, but they did give me an emergency C-section because I failed to progress. Um, and so when I went, when I was pregnant with Colt and I went on with my midwives again, I thought I would have a V-back 
but my midwife actually told me um, the chances of me actually giving birth vaginally are like slim to none and she said chances are you'll need a c-section anyways so it's probably just better to go ahead and book one now she said you can go ahead and try if you want but she said chances are you'll have to just get a c-section so um i'm thankful for that <laughs> modern medicine um and so we had a c-section with colt and we will go ahead and have a c-section with this baby too so um my due date is actually march 3rd so um but with c-sections when i had aubrey and colt it was when I had Colt, it was scheduled for two weeks before his due date. But now, um, it will likely be scheduled a week ahead of time. Things have changed so much in like the five years that I've last been pregnant. It's really kind of crazy. Just in, at least in our area of the world, um, things have switched up a bit. So anyways, um, my due date's March 3rd. I will have the baby a week prior to the due date, um, which puts us into February. I have little people running around, um, which puts us into February. So my birthday is February 21st. My father-in-law's birthday is February 20th. My brother-in-law and his girlfriend, who are like, we're all like one tight little family, they're having their first baby in February. Her due date is February 14th, Valentine's Day. Um, and then there's like a couple holidays, not counting Valentine's Day, but like a family day and like different things. Um, so that month is going to be crazy busy for us, which is all the best kind of celebrating. So, um, we will have December, which Shane and Aubrey both have their birthdays and Aubrey is just a couple days before Christmas. We'll have Christmas Eve and Christmas and New Year's and then Colt's birthday, which is, um, just a couple weeks after the first, the start of the new year. Um, and then we'll head into February with all the baby and birthday celebrations. So it's going to be a very busy time and we're so excited. So I find myself at this point already like in prepare mode, like thinking of all the things. Um, I'm thinking that like some things, like I probably won't go all out with my fall decor like I normally do. I'm still really going to decorate, like let's be honest, because that's like my heartbeat and I'm already thinking about it um and when it comes to Christmas I'm also thinking I'm gonna be like really pregnant at that point um so we'll see how far I get with the decorating but I'm I'm one of those people that will probably like still go all out but we'll see we'll see how I feel at that point but um yeah otherwise things are going really well so far um I, I will say, like, as far as uh, my channel and stuff is concerned, I will not probably be doing, like, um, bump dates, like, <laughs> belly shots and things like that. I'm just, I'm just not that kind of way. Um, I'm sure you'll see me, like, maybe on Instagram. I'm sure you'll see me in vlogs and, like, videos and stuff. But I just probably won't be one of those people that, like, show the belly, which is just not my thing. That's it's just not. <laughs> um, and I probably, I'm sure I'll update here and there. Um, I don't even know if it'll be monthly at this point because I don't feel like a whole lot is changing. But maybe when we get a little bit closer, I'll share more. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, that's where I kind of share a lot. Um, and, you know, you can probably see a lot more things there. I do Instagram stories sometimes and... Um, just kind of share a lot more over there as well. So I will still kind of keep you abreast of all the news <laughs> um, when we find out what we're having and um, how things will change with our house. Our house is really small. We do have four bedrooms, but the one is being used as our homeschool room and there is no way that we can give it up. Like no way. Uh, there's just too much in there and too much stuff that we have that we just don't have a spot for anywhere else um, and we're committed to keeping that as the homeschool room the kids are wanting to desperately share a room they wanted to share a room for a really long time so that's the plan is that we're gonna move them into a bedroom together we'll likely have to get bunk beds because Aubrey's in the master bedroom right now and it's 
too small for two twin beds and toys like it's just too small so we're probably going to do um bunk beds and we'll need to repaint her room because it's pink um and uh the Colt's room will turn into the nursery and we'll have to kind of redo that as well because it's really themed out kind of for him like we've got stripes on the wall and stuff so that'll kind of change um and we may switch like our bedroom around because y'all my bedroom is so small I don't even have room if we wanted to put like a little cradle or anything in our room like there is no space none I mean you have to kind of walk sideways to get in between this piece of furniture and our bed it's so small it's ridiculous so we may switch the master with the room that we have now so that we will have more space um, so that we can kind of put like a cradle or something in there. Um, I did I did co-sleep with Aubrey and Colt. It wasn't intentional, it wasn't planned, but once they turned around like six months old and they were no longer really kind of in their cradle, um, I used like the Fisher Price Rock and Play cradle or sleeper. It was amazing best thing ever um and it was just like a little cradle that kind of stayed on the side of the bed uh but once they were too big for that and kind of like trying to sit up and it wasn't safe anymore we did co-sleep um I nursed both of them exclusively um and so you know that's the plan with this baby and probably once it's like six months old we may do some co-sleeping I'm, I'm really not sure I'm just open to whatever um but when I had my other babies, I actually lived with my in-laws. So there wasn't actually space for a cradle, or I mean a crib. Um, it's just kind of the way that things were. Um, and if you're wondering why, we did like a whole home gut and renovation that was unplanned. Um, and it took a really long time because my husband did most of the work himself. And he was working like a dog, so at his actual job. So it was just kind of crazy, crazy time. But wouldn't trade it. It was quite amazing to have all these helping hands in the middle of the night who could hold my wide awake baby so I could sleep. Like, best gift ever. Seriously. Um, so it'll be weird. This will be the first time that I've ever decorated a nursery. Um, this will be the first time that we've ever brought a baby home to this house. Um, so it's a lot of firsts for us, even though it is our third baby. So anyways, we're excited and I'm excited to, you know, share this journey with you guys. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm just still every day just so, so shocked that we're going to have a baby. So thank you guys for sharing in this joy with us. If you have any questions, um, you can leave them down below. Um, and maybe I'll, I don't, I've never really done a Q and A kind of thing, but if there's enough questions of things that maybe I didn't address or like didn't go into enough detail or that you're curious about, just let me know and um, I'll answer them. <laughs> um, I'll tell you one thing and then I'm going to go. But when we, when I had to have the emergency C-section with Aubrey, like I said, the bill was climbing, 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 climbing. And um, when I knew I, had, I was going to have surgery, um, I was like panicked about the money because she was the only one bringing in an income because I couldn't work in Canada. And um, as I was getting prepped for like the surgery um, and getting like the spinal and all that and the anesthesiologist was talking to me. He was actually from France and he was um, an immigrant to Canada and he ended up waiving his fee completely because he felt so much for our situation. Um, and so our hospital bill ended up being so much smaller than it could have been. Um, and I ended up having to stay in the hospital for four days, um, which isn't totally typical with a C-section, but Aubrey ended up having to go into the NICU. Um, she had acrocinosis where she turned purple. Um, and it was discovered that she also had like a, a hereditary heart murmur and was presenting a lot of issues. Like kind of, she turned, blood red purple like several times it's really scary so anyway she left the hospital with like a halter monitor on her the nurse who'd been there like 20 years had said to me this is the first time we've ever or the smallest baby that I've the smallest person I've ever seen with a halter monitor on and she'd worked there for like 20 years so 
it was crazy. Um, Colt ended up in the NICU as well. Um, because part of the situation with C-section babies is that when you're, if you're not a C-section baby, if you're delivered naturally, um, the pressure like pushes a lot of the fluid out of the lungs and that doesn't happen when you're a C-section baby. So his lungs, he was, he was struggling to breathe. Um, and so he went to the NICU for 26 hours. <laughs> And so I was basically a mom without a baby for a while, and it was hard. Um, thankfully, like, I, it wasn't anything life-threatening, and, you know, it was only 26 hours, and some babies are there months and have serious problems. So we're hopeful that this baby will not go in the NICU, because um, that's just a scary experience. So anyways, okay. <laughs> That's it for my rambliness. My kiddos are in the background. It's probably pretty loud. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for celebrating with us and being just you guys. You're so great. Thank you. <laughs> um, I will see you in my next video. Bye.